Good morning, YouTube. Captain Dave in the Jetty Wolf truck. And I'm sorry about driving down the street doing this, but I'm trying to pack in as much as I can into, into today. I'm going to show you about a delivery that I should be getting today. And we're going to do some tackle talk. So if you stick with me here, we're going to do some tackle talk. And uh, I don't, I'm going to talk about uh, a little something that I don't talk about very often. And that is spinning tackle. I want to go fishing because it takes my stress away. I want to go fishing. Cast my blues away. I want to go fishing. I don't want to watch the clock. I want to go fishing. I don't ever want to stop. This is when you know you got a good FedEx or UPS driver. This is very much appreciated. All those people stealing shit these days. Look at this. There's Marad. There's Marad. <laughs> Look how these things came. Boy, Amazon, you really packaged these babies up good, didn't you? Only one guide is completely flattened. Look at that. Let's see. Okay, this one's completely bent. All right. I don't know if I'm going to be able to fix this one. Thank you, Amazon. But... These are new striper rods, and we're going to take them into Wolf Den, and I'm going to tell you a little more about why, how, and all that on these striper rods. And I'm going to have to do some severe work to that one right there. That one is totally and utterly crushed. You have to order them. And they have to come and beat to shit boxes like that. Alrighty, folks. I guess you know what this video is all about. It's going to be about ugly stick striper rods. Spinning striper rods. And I am an anti-spinite. Go figure. Alright. Well, who do we have to blame for this? I'm going to have to see here if these guides even line up any longer. That on, on spinning tackle, the eyes are so obtrusive. And people always want to know, when I talk about obtrusive, what am I talking about? I'm talking about it sticks out versus a casting rod. Okay? Then the reel sticks out. Then the handle sticks out. And I don't... You know, if you're a boat fisherman, and you're like me, you're going to have to be a floating tackle box. That shit matters, okay? These are ugly stick, Shakespeare ugly stick striper rods in spinning. And it's unfortunate, and many of you already know this, that they don't make a light, light, action a medium light a light action in spinners i do not know why they do it on the casting versions but they won't do it on the spinning versions and that's the reason i'm getting two more of these because i had two of them already you get to see the good the bad and the ugly but i'm going to show you what i mean when i say these are kind of big, okay? And I got to go through my 
broken rods and I just may have to take this tip off and put on another one. That son of a gun is flat. I don't know if I will be able to bend it back and if I break it I want to make sure that I've got an end that's comparable. Let me go check my parts and pieces pile. And I found what's left of an ugly stick light in spinning with a broken eye. I have saved this blank because I want a buddy of mine who builds rods, ex-customer, to take and strip this and turn this into a bait caster and just use this blank and turn this into a super float rig rod for me that is going to be ultimate durability. And I want him to put on the toughest guides that money can buy. But it's got an eye. And it's got an eye that will probably fit on here. It looks damn near the same. Let me show you. But it's, an, it's one of the original... Ugly Stick Lights, L-I-T-E. This is the old Ugly Stick Light. This is the predecessor of the tough guides that they put on the Ugly Stick Light. See how they have like a stainless steel insert? Well, you know, they were, they're trying to fool us, I guess. Oh, the Ugly Tough Guides, you know... They have these anti-pop-out um, stainless inserts. Well, here's the ugly tough guide on the brand new striper rod that's smashed. And I don't know if you can see that, but these guides are damn near essentially the same. Remarketed. Maybe a little different, but they're remarketed. It's essentially the same guide, I believe. These on the brand new striper look to be all, you know, stainless steel. And I hate single-footed guides. I hate these, okay? Because that's the guide that used to put on the lights. Double-footed. So much more tougher than these. These just bend. They've already bent, and I had to bend them back. These are so much stronger. That's the way the world works, folks. That's how it's working. They're cheapening these up, and God forbid, let's not talk about the damn GX2s. But this ugly stick light is back when these were the cat's ass. Stripers, I'm using them because they're a mid-priced rod. They don't really have the action I want in the stripers. Like I said, the stripers are medium heavy and all the lightest you can get on a spinning rod. These ugly stick lights were just it in spinning and casting. But of course, somebody slammed it and broke one of the guides, the big guide, the first one coming off the real seat on me, which... I mean, I could have that replaced, but I'm just going to take this rod and turn it into a bait caster. I'm going to see if I can bend this back. I seriously doubt it. Look how twisted up it looks right there. If not, and it breaks, I'm going to heat it up, and I'm going to glue on this one. See how this works out. I don't think it's going to be pretty. All right, I think I'm going to leave it like that. Okay, here's the non-bent one. And here's the bent, the one that was bent. 
I think that's about the best I can do. I'm just going to leave it like that. And if so, I'll have to just replace it if it breaks. This has less guides, these stripers. They're further apart. But it takes some significant pressure on a medium heavy to bend this rod. The striper has the gimbal butt. You see that? That goes into rod holders. Everybody who has these on their catfish boat, their walleye boat, and you don't realize that this is very important on a boat with real gunnels, with real pole holders that are you know, screwed into the boat. Because as soon as you stick this in, you can lock it. When you stick it in the rod holder, you don't always have the dang reel smacking into the boat where you have to turn it sideways or something because this is longer I refer to the striper rods especially these spinners as a bait spinning rod they're for bait these aren't really for you know pitching little 3 8 ounce jigs you can put a 3 8 ounce jig on it pitch it out let some line stick it in a rod holder, and bait fish with it. So that's what these will do on my boat. It's a very ba basic rod. I want parabolic bend. Parabolic bend is this nice arcing. Remember the old, which you don't see anymore. I don't see it anywhere on this. The old ugly stick logo was the rod bending over and said ugly stick. And they made huge mistakes when they got rid of this ugly stick light, L-I-T-E, with those guides with the stainless steel inserts, the cork grip, the, the good reel seat, this giant butt cap, these rods have such an unbelievable bend to them. Now, what is this one? This one is a medium light. I wish the stripers came in this right here. When I say parabolic, folks, that's what I'm talking about. That's why we use an ugly stick. We don't want these... Rods that stiff and then the tip folds over. This is why we want an ugly stick. I think many of you will agree that are ugly stick users. This is why you use it. This is why you don't use a G. Loomis that is stiff as a board, a St. Croix that's stiff as a board. Okay? Some of these other rods that are so graphite, yeah, they don't weigh nothing. But then again, they're brittle, they break, and they're stiff. They got this super fast action that is stiff as a board, little tiny bendy tip. This is light tackle. That's a big fish surging. That's light tackle right there in my world. But the closest I could get for my customers in a rod that is affordable, that is a bait type rod, spinning rod, is the Ugly Stick Striper 7 foot. Now let me show you the type of reels that I'm using on these because that starts to get into a whole nother ballpark. Alright, before we can get into anything, I am so thirsty. So that is a 20 ounce PBR. Alright, Finor Lethal 40. Seven ball bearings. But the reason this reel works for me, the 40 size has a big time line capacity. If we're looking at diameter of line or just poundage, most people go by poundage. 12 mono is 200 yards. Says it right there. The third, this is 30 on here with a with a mono leader, and these things. Can take some serious abuse there's no cap here there's it's 
This is all metal, and I haven't had any issues with it at all. I have never done anything to these real special, other than maybe drop a little oil here, drop a little oil there, just to keep her going. I may have taken the roller out, dropped a little oil in there. Let's take a look under the hood. They got rubber there, got a rubber washer there. You can see inside, I got them all gr super greased. There's no, there's no water down in there, there or no salt. There's nothing. You got, looks like double bearings right in here. They're just a really good reel. Smoothest drag in the world? I don't know. Pretty nice, pretty nice. They call their drag the mega drag. But this is what I use when it comes to spinning. I don't know a lot about spinning reels, don't care to know a lot about spinning reels. Here's what I am. As I always tell people, I'm an end user. So all I can do is tell you these work. So this is the reels that I use. I'm going to outfit all stripers i'll have four stripers with these on and i'm going to be pressing them more into service i'm going to force myself to take them i always fight it because it's just sometimes the less casting that some people do the the, the better off we are but i tell people please manually trip the bale we're not in a hurry Make sure the line is in the roller before you turn the handle, please. They're not the lightest reels in the world, but if you're looking for a very durable salt water, I mean, I'm salt water, folks. I'm not on a freshwater lake. This is doused in salt water, and I am going to start using the rocket launchers way on top of my top on the Jetty Wolf. I'm going to start using those more. I don't really use them. I don't know why. Kind of out of sight, out of mind. And I'm going to get my spinners up and out of the dang way. Because people can walk by all my bait casters and all my Shimano Tritons and all that. They can walk right by. They're not catching their pants and their shorts and their tank tops or whatever the hell. I mean, whatever. If it's utility and it's heavy duty... Hey, I'm all in. And that's the reason why I'm going to match these up on the striper spinning seven foot medium heavy rods. Braid, I don't, I can't remember all the details about it, but I went to a heavier braid and I, I got a lot better line lay and I got less loopity dupes going out. I just call it a spinner backlash. <laughs> spinner backlash. So there you go. There's a little overview of my charter tackle. And hopefully you can make a good decision out of me showing you what I use. Because you got to remember, I just told a guy this on the phone the other day. You got to remember, not every fishing charter out there has got, you know, Roland Martin, Hank Parker, and Jimmy Houston going fishing with them no go to your average walmart stand at the front door and as people walk out go do you like fishing and people are gonna go yeah i love fishing would you ever go fishing like hire a boat a captain with tackle and, and local knowledge and everything to go fishing and they go yeah yeah i would uh you know depending on how much it costs well, there's the people that I'm taking. I'm taking the people that are walking out of Walmart. Their son comes into town. It's the middle of summer. They hear about fishing. They want to go fishing. They're not they're not Roland Martin, Hank Parker, Jimmy Houston, and Bill Dance. Okay? These people, they like fishing. They like the idea of fishing. Going fishing. Not going catching. Going fishing. I've got a lot of people that know how to fish. And I got a lot of people who don't. So it's kind of like going golfing. I love golf because it's man against the elements, the wind, the rain, the grass. 
It's man against getting his ball from point A to point B. Do I know the first damn thing about a golf club? Hell no. Would I like to go golfing? Hell yeah. It's like watching grass grow. But it's like fishing. A lot of fishing is like watching grass grow. All right. When I'm unboxing brand new rods, it's one of the first things that I always do. Here you go. This is what I do. I take these ties and I put it right here or right here. Most likely on spinners, I put it down here. Because why? That little hook holder is kind of always a snagger. So I smash it down and I try not to use it. Sometimes I just break them off. So everyone always asks me about these. And this is now our hook holder. It ain't nothing but a cable tie. And I cut it real close. Come on, come on, four max. All right. Cold steel, four max. And I shave it really close because I don't want it to be, I don't want it to be like, you know, sticking nobody. All right, so there it is. It's shaved real close. And now there is where our hook holder is. Down here behind the reel. Let me show you how you get these. All right, here you go. At Home Depot's electrical department, all the zip ties you'd ever want. And if you come right up here for $2.48, there they are. Instant hook holders for bigger hooks. Mounting cable ties. The mystery is solved. Where do you get those, Dave? Where do you get those? Electrical aisle of Home Depot. And you even got, let's see, here you go, $9, this is the ones I buy, $9.77, and you get probably a hundred of them. And here's black ones. All right, look at the picture. The hole. All right. Mystery solved.